At last, welcome viewer. As you no doubt have guessed, I am Mike Farrington. And after this, there is no turning back. I'm Mike Farrington, welcome back to the boardroom. Sorry for the intro, I watched the movie The Matrix recently and couldn't help myself. Anyway, I've been working on a bunch of different dust collection projects in my shop recently, and I thought in this video I would share a few tips that I've picked up along the way. Tip one is an obvious one, but a good one. Get a high quality fan and stick it in a window. Open up a door window on the other side of your shop, create some cross ventilation, and that will help blow all the dust that hangs in the air, the finest dust, right out the window. And for some extra credit, if you have an operation in your shop like grinding or sanding that creates a lot of dust, do that by the fan and pump that dust out the window before it has a chance to get into the air that you're breathing. Tip 1.1, if you can, build a shroud around your fan. This will help ensure that the fan isn't recirculating the same air over and over and that you're getting good cross ventilation. Tip two, build ambient air filters for your shop. Ambient air cleaners are a great supplement to a dust collection system to help catch the dust that isn't caught at the point of creation. To build these, I purchased two Win filters. These are special filters because they're designed to have the air pass from the outside to the inside, which is the opposite of most dust collection filters. From there, I added a piece of plywood to the bottom. There's a seal on the bottom of these filters from the factory. Next, I added some weather stripping to the top, and finally, I dropped an eight inch inline duct fan on the top and called it good. These filters are amazing. They have 300 square feet of surface area that's rated at MERV 15. And that just means that these filters do a great job of filtering teeny tiny particles out of the air. I think these are great value. I paid about 500 bucks for the two filters with delivery. I paid about $210 for the two duct fans, add a few dollars for the weather stripping, and I think I'm going to add a plug-in timer. That brings the grand total to about $375 each. When compared to purchasing commercially available ambient air cleaners like the kind that hang from the ceiling, these are fairly inexpensive. Plus, these use a much better filter media and have way more surface area. Okay, the downside is these can't be hung from the ceiling, so my solution, I'm going to set them up and out of the way on some custom-made shelves. This filter is not my design. I believe Bill Pence was the original designer, which I bumped into his site while surfing on Wynn's website. I have no affiliation with any of them, but I thought this was a neat design that would work well for my shop. I'll put a raft of links below for some additional homework. Initial testing seemed positive. I think my plan will be to vent straight up during the winter to help push the warm air down and add a 90 degree turn during the summer months to keep the cool air lower. When these are plugged in, each is pumping out about 700 cubic feet per minute of fresh and clean air. Final question is how often will these need cleaning? And I don't have that answer yet. All right, tip three, get a leaf blower. These are great for blowing out floors and also cleaning filters. Here's a little trick I like to call the dust cannon. A little tapping in a blower is a great way to get filters nice and clean, but it's best to do this on a day with a breeze. I think using a blower for this is great because the air shot out of a blower is fairly spread out and soft, whereas air out of a compressor can be so focused that it can actually damage the filter. If your neighbors are close by and you want to stay in their good graces, the next best method I have found is to do the seal clap, and that's gently whap both sides of the filter to loosen dust. Follow that up with some tapping with the filter angled. This actually works surprisingly well. All right, on to tip four. A heat gun is a great tool to have around when installing PVC ductwork. You can use the heat gun to gently heat the PVC until it's nice and squishy, and then it can be bent or the diameter can be changed to work with other fittings.
Tip five, build dust collection shrouds around tools that need it. I recently built this shroud for my radial arm saw, one for my chop saw, and a while back I built a couple for my table saw. I don't care how powerful a dust collector is, it's not gonna be able to collect the dust if the blade isn't enclosed in something. I built these two table saw overarm shrouds a while back, one for my cabinet saw and one for my sliding table saw. They work surprisingly well. I have a video on my channel detailing the build. Tip six, consider investing in an air quality or particle meter for your shop. These aren't inexpensive, however, they constantly measure the air quality in your shop. They can also be used to determine which tools are puffing out the most dust and then whether changes made to a dust collection system were productive or not. This model has two measurements, one for very small particles and one for very, very small particles. This tool has helped me learn a lot about where the most dust is being created in my shop. All right, tip seven. This is an anemometer. These are inexpensive devices and they measure wind speed. I think this is important to have one of these for your shop because it allows you to measure the airspeed at the end of a dust collection run, which tells you if you're moving air at a speed such that particles won't settle out within the dust collection pipe. Using this anemometer has helped me learn a ton about ductwork size. A common question is, should I use pipe size X or Y? An anemometer can help answer that. Using a larger pipe will typically yield more volume, but it will also cause a drop in velocity. The idea is to balance the two. Use the largest pipe possible that still keeps velocity in the range of 3,500 to 4,500 feet per minute that experts agree is best. This is where a dust collection system will be at its most efficient. So here we're looking at the run to my planer. As I move it closer to the hose, the anemometer is showing over 6,000 feet per minute, which it just registers as high at that point. This means I probably could have used a larger diameter pipe for this run. Tip eight, put Loctite on these little dust collection tension knobs, otherwise they'll fall out. All right, tip nine. I think it's a good idea to vacuum the floors of your shop each day. You work in your shop, it makes dust, it goes up in the air, it settles out on the floor. The next morning you come clomping back in, stomp all over that dust and it kicks it right back up into the air. So invest in a good quality filter for your shop vac and some sort of wand to help vacuum the floor more easily. Mine has been nicely decorated with electrical tape by the shop apprentice. With the particle meter on the ground, I stomp around dramatically. As you can see, it kicks up a ton of dust. Sweeping pretty much does the same thing. So vacuuming is really the only way to avoid this. Tip 10, let's take a look at vac hoses. This is a Festool shop vac hose, standard fitting there. The key to these hoses is this fitting here. It allows you to move this hose from tool to tool to tool quickly. The problem with these hoses is they're fairly expensive and it's just a vacuum hose. Bosch has developed a vacuum hose that feels really nice, good quality. Same fitting to go into a vacuum. The real key though is this fitting. This fitting is close enough to the Festool fitting such that this will work with any Festool as well as a host of other handheld power tools. But here's the kicker. This is an under $50 vacuum hose, so it's a great value. In the last 10 years or so, handheld power tools have really come a long way. Fortunately, vacuum hoses have come a long way as well. Both the Festool and the Bosch hoses help avoid the duct tape and zip tie approach of yesteryear, and they make hooking up a tool to a shop vac really quick, easy, and secure. All right, time for tip 11. Tip 11 is more like an awareness tip. Uh, I want you to be aware that there is a tool called downdraft table. What's well, downdraft table? Um, it just has some slots, a filter, and a blower. The blower pulls air down through the slots, through the filter, and out the exhaust. These are perfect for hand sanding, jigsaw work, drilling, routing, things like that. There are plenty of tutorials on YouTube on how to make these, so that might be an option as the commercially available ones are pretty expensive. Um, but they do work good and they do help keep dust out of the air when doing smaller bench type work. 
Tip number 12. I just picked up a new shaper and it's made in Europe, so it's got a metric dust collection fitting on it. And I wouldn't even know where to buy metric dust collection hose. I just have the four inch stuff here. So I make adapters out of plywood. This is a couple layers of plywood. I cut a slot in it and uh, the slot allows for a little flexibility there. So here's how it works. I have also made donuts for the shaper's fence as well as my sliding table saw. And tip 13, wow, okay. Um, when installing new flex hose, install it full length and let it sit for a week or two, let it stretch out. If you think about it, this stuff has been collapsed down in a box for weeks, months, or years, and taking it out and letting it stretch a little bit is gonna allow you to cut off the longest piece possible, which then could be useful for something else. Tip 14, install your dust collector in such a way that it's easy to access the filter. When I first had this system installed, I had it turned and pushed up against the wall, and that made it difficult to get to the filter. So I've turned it to its orientation now, and as you can see, I can get to all sides of it with ease. That makes cleaning and removal replacement super duper easy. A clean filter is critical to a dust collection system that sucks enough, so you want to make that task as easy as possible. I recently put out a video on my miter station build, and in that video I show how I built this dust collection system. If you're going for filters that are easy to remove, this is the best that I've found so far. Check out that video for more information. Tip 15, silicone's a great sealer for dust collection systems. If you don't use too much of it, the joint is reversible, which is great because I find myself taking dust collection systems apart way too often. Big Stretch is just a brand that I like, and I think that was my nickname in high school. The name seems to be accurate. It really does stretch amazingly well. It's certainly overkill for a dust collection system, but I think it's good to just have around the shop, and it seems to keep really well once opened. All right, barreling forward, we're up to tip 16. Uh, tip 16 is a luxury. If you could afford it, get a couple of different shop vacs and spread them around your shop to dedicated tasks. This is just nice and convenient to have. This is my sanding station. I'm using a fine or fiend, I don't know how to pronounce that, turbo vacuum. I think these are great vacuums, really good quality. I think they represent a good value for their price as well. Uh, what's neat about this one, it has a plug for the tool, and when the tool is turned on, it turns the vacuum on automatically, which is nice and convenient for a sanding station. Also, I'd like to note that I'm using one of the Bosch vacuum hoses that I mentioned earlier. All right, tip 17 sort of goes without saying, except I'm gonna say it anyway. Um, we all need a dust collection mask at some point in time. Um, this is the old style, these giant cartridge filters, while they worked well, they were not comfortable to wear for long periods of time. This newer style has these really slick low profile filters, yet they still filter really well. They also come in different sizes, whereas the old ones were one size fits all, so you can kind of tailor this to fit your face as good as possible. A good seal is critical. I wear a size large, which is perfect for my fat head. Okay, tip 18. Between PVC and metal duct work, I actually like the PVC better. I think it's a better dust collection pipe. The inside's smooth, but most importantly, it's much easier to cut and install. The metal stuff, however, is a better value in the larger diameters. So this metal duct work back here is eight inch. This PVC ductwork is six inch. The problem with PVC is that when you get to that eight inch size, it's prohibitively expensive. So I end up going with the metal ductwork. All right, tip 19. If you do choose to install PVC ductwork, Use 245 degrees together to make a 90 degree turn versus a single 90 degree fitting. This creates a smoother flow around the corner. <laughs> All right, why don't we end with some words of encouragement? And those words would be, don't freak out. Dust is not healthy to breathe, but breathing a little bit of dust isn't gonna kill you. 
Just like smoking one cigarette wouldn't kill you or getting one sunburn won't give you skin cancer necessarily. It's uh, also important that I think that someone say out loud that it's not possible to breathe zero wood dust in a wood shop. I think that a better way to look at dust collection would be to take steps over time to improve. That's been my approach. I start with a sanding station, I add dust collection to my workbench, I upgrade my main collector, I add some ambient filters, I upgrade my chop saw, and so on. I don't think it would have been possible for me to just sit down and nail all of that on the first time out. I needed to take those steps and learn and improve with each dust collection project that I've done over time. So I encourage you to look at dust collection in that way in your shop. Take steps to improve over time.